things to India. Um, uh, that means four and a half hours time difference. Um, yeah. <laughs> This was one point in the morning, I always thought it's uh, 12.30, and then I realized, oh, it's 11.30, we have to start. <laughs> I know, sometimes uh, we do that mistake. <laughs> uh, uh, good. Yeah. Maybe while people are joining, uh, shall we request uh, each of them to have a small uh, uh, one line or two line? Uh, uh, yes, of course, of course. Then maybe we can start with this, uh, yes. Uh, so uh, before we start, uh, maybe uh, uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Muhammad Riyazdur Rahman. Maybe you can start with a brief introduction about you and your organization. Just one or two lines. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and uh, myself, yeah, yeah. You know, I am from CSI at CBRI, uh, Rudki, Central Builder Research, Research Institute. And uh, uh, I am working on automating building materials. Uh, here at CBRI, and uh, we have worked on a new binder that is geopolymer concrete, which is a kind of uh, alkali activated binder. And uh, we have a demonstration uh, here um, using this concrete. We have uh, demonstrated a road construction in our campus itself, and uh, one at uh, the NTPC Dadri plant located in near New Delhi. We have constructed a 100 meter road, and after that, this NTPC, that is National Thermal Power Plant, which is producing flyers, they are uh, using that uh, flyers for their internal road constructions because it is not in the schedule rate of, uh, the, uh, of the Delhi or any schedule rate, so that it cannot be used in normal construction. So, they are internally they are using this material. So, we are looking for translating this technology into the market. So that this technology can see the day of the light, so because it has a lot of benefits. So with that, I am looking forward to see in the meeting how can I get benefited and those technology can be transferred. Thank you. Uh, we have somebody from CSIR, CIMFR. Can you introduce yourself, please? Media, 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 social media. Yeah. Yes, maybe we can say that uh, um, only the person who is uh, speaking is putting on the microphone and the others then are uh, unmuted. Then it's, I think, easier with, with noises and with other things which are in the background. Yeah. Okay, so uh, who is there from CSI or CIMFR? CIMFR, I'm not able to hear your voice. I am Dr. Gautam Banerjee from. Uh, I am Dr. Gautam Banerjee. Yes, sir. Chief scientist from CSI CIM Simple. So can you just give a brief of one or two lines about CIMFR? CIMFR is, uh, is an organization which does the, the research on the mining and fuel sector. And uh, we have got here uh, 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 lots of development which is taking place. And we do research. We have our own technologies and we are developing some products also. Uh, the, the various types of products which are being there. And we have already done some, uh, some uh, we have uh, already given some uh, the products for the, for the, uh, uh, to some companies on uh, we have uh, for, for some companies there they have already purchased our our this one and we are getting some royalty a royalty for that one and in this in the last financial year from the royalty we have earned around uh, this financial year not around one crore from this one and uh, one one product called the for, for the digital mine has been sold to uh, has been taken over by three three, three parties and so on so there is a team which, which does all those things. There is a product development team, and they are uh, going for going for new products with, with, for the mining industry. So you are working in the area of mining and fuel research. That's correct. Yeah. So thanks a lot. Uh, can we move on to uh, Dr. Smita Gopinath? Hello, 
Oh, yes, sir. I am Dr. Smitha Gopinath from Structural Engineering Research Center, Chennai. So here, uh, um, myself and my colleague, Dr. Anub, has joined this meeting. Uh, we also represent Technology Transfer and Commercialization Committee of SCRC. So uh, we, uh, we are mainly, in the past couple of years as well as now also, we are mainly focusing on translating the research into various technologies and products. So uh, we really look forward for this meeting to get some useful tips, which will help us to take the commercialization side of the research. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Smita. And uh, Bertram, I am working uh, closely with Dr. Smita uh, for commercializing a technology which is textile reinforced concrete. So uh, we are working for one of the clients uh, in North India. Mm -hmm. We have then Dr. G. B. R. K. Prasad. Yeah, good afternoon to you. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you. Good afternoon. Yes, we hear you. Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, I, I worked in pharmaceutical industry as a head of commercial services for CapEx and uh, MRO supplies for uh, mm -hmm. a $2 billion group, Dr. Reddy's. And then uh, for 15 years, I worked there. And then five years, I worked with Hetero as a global sourcing head for their projects, okay, uh, building new greenfield projects and uh, making it operational, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and after that, uh, after retirement, I'm still assisting the pharmaceutical sector in, uh, in and around Hyderabad uh, uh, as a consultant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my specialty is in manufacturing of uh, any API required or uh, any formulation required, and then how best, how quickly we can execute it. So, uh, with uh, Dr. GBRK Prasad and uh, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology at Hyderabad, uh, we are working in a couple of technology transfers for industry mm -hmm. in the of APIs. Um, then uh, we can invite Mr. Nitin. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, very good afternoon. I'm Nitin Lapsed Parks. So I work with the CSIR National Environmental Engineering Research Institute, Miri Nagpur. And uh, I'm also heading a, a division called the Energy and Resource Management Division. So we are working on, as for the mandate of Miri, we are mostly into the pollution control uh, processes and technologies. And incidentally, I'm also part of the uh, what we call as a technology transfer committee. I have also asked my colleague, Dr. Avnish Anshu to join because he's the guy who is working on uh, high volume uh, waste utilization, including the fly ash and other, uh, you know, like uh, mine waste. And he has developed uh, some uh, very nice pervier concretes and other uh, stuff, which uh, he's also trying to upscale it. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, we are into some catalyst based uh, technologies and uh, emission control technologies as well as wa water and wastewater technology as part of the media. So, uh, most of the details are, of course, available there on our website. But today, I think once Dr. Anshul joins, he would uh, like to brief you about uh, uh, high utilization of uh, these uh, mine waste as well as uh, fly ash. So, it's, it's my pleasure to be here and I'm looking forward to hear from you. Thank you, Dr. Nitin. Uh, may I now invite Mr. Ankit Bhattaga to introduce himself and the organization. Yes, sir. We are, my name is Ankit Bhattaga and uh, we are working for uh, SME development and uh, providing support to the new entrepreneurs uh, to uh, have procurement from uh, the market and to start their own manufacturing plans. Thank you. Mr. Ankit, uh, Mr. Subjinder Singh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. Sujinder here uh, from CS. I am working here as a coordinator of business development and marketing unit at CSR IHBT Palam. You are from which lab? Mr. Singh, you have to switch on we, the mic. We cannot hear you, Mr. Singh. IHBT Palampur, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yes, sir. 
Here I am working here as a senior scientist and coordinator of business development and marketing unit. What is the and full form of IHBT, sir? Sir, it's Institute of Himalayan Biosource Technology. Mm -hmm. Institute of Himalayan Biosource Technology. Thanks a lot. Yeah, sir. We yeah, are having, sir. Uh, yeah. We are having number of technologies around agro technologies, chemical technologies, food technologies, and biotechnologies. Mm -hmm. And we are also have transferred number of technologies on non-exclusive basis. And uh, uh, further, we have also provided number of agro technologies as well as consultancy services. And we are having also need-based R&D projects with certain companies and uh, farmer producers, uh, organizations, and societies. Mm -hmm. So here we would like to know about the exact mechanism you will uh, uh, for this technology transfer. Actually, we are adopting as per the mechanism, as per the uh, guidelines of CSIR. And uh, we'll also be interested to know about the, uh, you can say the technology, costing of the technologies, okay, before commercialization, then how to predict the, you can say the market potential of different technologies and to evaluating all these kind of, how we can assess the, uh, uh, this uh, technology license fees, okay, before commercialization. So all these uh, will be interested for us, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Uh, can I invite yeah. Mr. Asant? Okay, while we wait for Mr. Vasant, Dr. Manish. I'll just open, yeah. Namaskar. I am Dr. Manish Mudgal. Uh, I am senior principal scientist at uh, and head of uh, Center for Advanced Radiation Shielding and Geopolymeric Materials at CSIR MPRI Bhopal. My parent, this organization, CSIR MPRI Advanced Materials and Processes Research Institute, this is based at M Bhopal, and uh, we are working in the field of uh, bulk utilization of industrial waste for development of radiation shielding concrete and geopolymeric materials and concrete. Mm -hmm. So okay. since last uh, 14 years, we are working in this field. We have uh, developed radiation shielding uh, synthetic aggregate ut utilizing uh, industrial waste, that is red mud, developed uh, um, radiation shielding concrete, replaced 100% replacement of uh, hematite ore being used for radiation shield, heavy, heavy density, radiation shielding concrete and uh, other other technology we have developed uh, bulk utilization of flash for making uh, cement free geopolymeric concrete uh, we have developed uh, this concrete we got three us patent granted on that and uh, transferred technology to technology to two in, uh, industries one is jspl raigad and second is uh, jmr industries uh, vidisha we have demonstrated this road in uh, All India Institute of Medical Sciences in Bhopal and uh, uh, upscaled this technology in a center, which is uh, recently uh, got uh, inaugurated by Honorable Dr. Harshvardhan, our um, Minister of Science and Technology and Vice President of CSIR on 13th of March. So I am glad to... Uh, be in this particular uh, meeting and looking forward to you, uh, listen from you. We, I, I, I have already gone through your uh, this uh, matter on the stabilization of this soil. So that will be a good solution to go for a road development. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Manish. Uh, I have uh, visited uh, this lab at Empri Bhopal and I can uh, tell you, Bertram, they are doing some phenomenal work in terms yes. of shielding and also utilization of fly ash. But yeah. I feel that uh, there is uh, some small gap uh, in uh, getting it uh, to the national and international level because this kind of technology should find a huge uh, scope everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So we have to really discuss about it and find a way out for that. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Again, uh, may I invite uh, Ms. Ambika Bahel. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Myself, Dr. Ambika Behel. Uh, I'm working as a principal scientist and uh, head of the flexible no. pavement department. Uh, 
regarding our work uh, we are working on uh, various uh, technologies which can uh, either bring down the uh, ghg or carbon emissions like uh, uh, during the road construction and also to uh, uh, we are working a lot on recycling of pavements which can uh, reduce the uh, consumption of the natural resources as well uh, yeah as well as reduce the construction time and the reduce and reduce the construction cost we may name your lab please you are from which lab central road research institute crri okay yes, so i'm from crri okay. so as i was telling uh, we work on various technologies uh, including stabilization of pavement stabilized pavement where we are working uh, on different additives uh, commercial uh, additives uh, and also cement uh, using cement we are making stabilized pavements and mm -hmm. also uh, using waste plastic in road construction how to uh, enhance the uh, strength part of the road as well as uh, take care of the plastic pollution we are also working on cold mix technology for himalayan regions where hot mix plants uh, are not existing how to construct roads so various uh, uh, sectors and various organizations for which our projects uh, tackle to is like border road organization national highway authority ministry of road and transport so this is a broad which uh, my department works like i'm heading flexible pavement division we also work on use of uh, slag like from steel industry there is a huge project going on in our department where ministry of steel has funded and all the steel slag waste aggregate is being used in uh, flexible pavements we are also working on chrome slag so basically all kind of waste materials which can be used in road construction so as to save the consumption of natural aggregates mm -hmm. so, okay thank you dr amrika yeah Uh, may I now invite again uh, Mr. Vasant, if he is available now. Okay, uh, we move on to Mr. Sridhar. Mr. Sridhar. Yeah. Uh, na namaste. This is Sridhar from uh, CSR NAL National Aerospace Laboratories. Uh, I work. I am a principal scientist working with industry interface and business development group. CSR NAL is main focus is to design, develop civil aircrafts. Currently, we are handling two seater trainer aircraft new generation, which is set to roll out on thirty uh, first March two thousand twenty one, and another nineteen seater aircraft which is ongoing, and we have lot of aerospace spin off technologies. Which we have developed over the decades, and we are able to successfully transfer to many industries, uh, be it is a large industries, medium and MSMEs, including startups. So we would like to uh, hear from you that what other ways of uh, exploiting our own technology, the way we package the technologies, and uh, there are a lot of technologies uh, at NAL where no TRL level three to four is there. How to Bring the tier level uh, to marketable uh, level, or at least a startup or MSME can look at it. Uh, and uh, another thing is that we are finding little uh, concerned about costing. Some of the technologies when we cost, no, it uh, seems to be too high for them to uh, afford. So in that aspect, maybe some uh, somewhat uh, innovative ways of looking at it also may be uh, helpful for us. third one is we are uh, uh, currently uh, uh, initiating a, a technology business center along with nrdc and uh, with the private funding from tata trust specifically focusing on uh, uh, developing nurturing uh, aerospace ecosystem through incubating uh, aerospace uh, high tech based msmes as well as startups in that process we our desire is to uh, bring our technologies to incubators as well so in this uh, uh, area if some uh, inputs can be provided from this uh, uh, meeting it will be really helpful for us and thank you thank you mr sridhara uh, i think we have a lot of people and uh, we need to reduce our introduction to just two lines maybe i can yeah. Uh, request uh, uh, all the other speakers to just introduce themselves and the organization 
and maybe in one line what is their expectation uh, from this meeting so may I request yeah. mr all half my script please yeah uh, good afternoon may i say something Who is it? Yeah, I'm. I'm Dr. Akram Khan from CSIR Ampri Bhopal. Yes. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Good afternoon to all of you. My name is uh, Dr. Akram Khan. I am a senior principal scientist, and I am heading a division which is uh, uh, industrial waste utilization, nano and biomaterials division at CSIR Ampri. This is Advanced Materials and Processes Research Institute. Uh, basically in our division we work uh, with a great thrust on industry sponsored projects uh, we have done lot of industry sponsored projects uh, for uh, ntpc for hindustan copper limited for reliance for orient paper mills for grassim industries for bharat oman refineries so what i mean to say is that this group uh, works uh, uh, in collaboration uh, with large number of industry sponsored projects and the great thrust is on utilization of different types of industrial wastes so we we have been primarily working on fly ash we have been working on red mud we have been working on brine sludge we have been working on pet coke fly ash uh, then copper tailings uh, recently we are working on silico manganese slag and so on also on etp sludge so the good part about this division is that uh, we work on these projects and uh, we try to culminate these projects in the form of a technology transfer which is a need based project uh, we end up with the, a technology transfer to the industry and that we have successfully done for uh, hindustan copper limited where we utilized a large uh, huge amount of copper ore tailings which pose a great threat to the environment by making advanced pavers block which was a great substitute to the conventional sand and we transferred this technology uh, after a successful demonstration of 5000 paver blocks then recently we have transferred a technology to prism johnson limited which is on radiation shielding uh, uh, tiles that we have made out of red mud and this technology was transferred in the uh, presence of honorable director general csir dr mande and uh, this technology is now at a very advanced stage of uh, you know industrial trials within a month or so the product should be in market we are going to launch it soon and we have done a very successful demonstration after this technology transfer to um, uh, saindeep healthcare hospital in ahmednagar so we we have worked on uh, you know red mud uh, we have converted it into x ray radiation shielding material we have transferred the technology to prism johnson we have also worked on advanced geopolymeric tetrapods uh, where we have used uh, you know large bulk utilization of silo fly ash and also for the first time we attempted by using sea sand and sea water and we developed these advanced geopolymeric tetrapods for ntpc uh, which was successfully demonstrated at simhadri which is near vishakhapatnam uh, then we are also working on uh, with bharat oman refineries for their pet coke fly ash apart from that uh, my division also works on nano materials um, bio materials the nature inspired bio materials and some of my scientists are also you know uh, trying their best to get associated with eu also european union for igstc projects uh, for some uh, other uh, advanced stage of developments which is in progress so through this meeting i am looking at a very large domain of uh, you know in, uh, application industrial application and utilization of industrial wastes csr ampri has a proven expertise uh, on utilization of industrial wastes and we have successfully demonstrated these technologies so i am looking forward to hearing from uh, my counterparts how csr ampri can get along and how csr in general can get along with you mm -hmm. to partner up for some major projects and for technologies transfer and commercialization thank you thank you dr we want one uh, one comment linet we are now yes. 52 participants that means <laughs> if everybody is introducing maybe we can proceed maybe to start with uh, the content and then when the questions are asked maybe before everybody can make sure some short sentences to his person maybe this is a strategy or what do you suggest i don't know uh, maybe if everybody agrees we proceed or we can have just the name and the name of the organization from everybody if everybody we not to extend the discussion sir so let us proceed with the main main part of it actually we can have the introductions later on okay okay so we proceed uh, with the uh, content of the program uh so uh, a very uh, warm welcome to all of you a formal welcome though we have been starting uh, we have already started introduction 
My name is Vineet Goyal and I am uh, the director for Steinbase Center for Technology Transfer India. Steinbase uh, is a German organization based in Stuttgart, uh, which was uh, formulated uh, probably two centuries back to transfer knowledge from uh, universities and research institutions from, uh, to the industry. So that, that was the main objective of establishing Steinbase. It was established as a Steinbase foundation and uh, later on it was converted in, uh, it also established a Steinbase uh, private limited company for technology transfer that was in the year 1985. And uh, today Steinbase has got more than uh, uh, 1300 uh, transfer centers, most of them based in universities and research institutions and some of them with, uh, independent consultants. And uh, in over 400 universities and research institutions in Germany and we have got more than 6000 work uh, experts uh, working in Steinbase network with a total turnover of 190 million euros, almost 190 million euros last year. Uh, so we have been uh, uh, now expanding globally and uh, Steinbase has been quite strong in uh, China. And uh, one of the main objective of Steinbase is to uh, expand its uh, knowledge base, uh, working with uh, other scientists and uh, other experts, universities in other countries, so that we can learn from each other. So the, the knowledge of uh, technology transfer and innovation from Steinbase can flow to them and uh, from uh, uh, other, uh, from other countries like China and India, uh, uh, of course, Steinbase should also get benefited. So I don't, I won't take much of time here uh, 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 telling more about Steinbase or about Steinbase India. I would rather uh, pass on uh, the baton to uh, Dr. Bertram Loymuller, uh, who is a senior expert in Steinbase and is also uh, one of the center directors uh, in Steinbase. Maybe he can introduce himself and also uh, take on from here. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very uh, much, Vinod. I'm really impressed that uh, with 54 participants, it's a really big group. And first, I want to, to mention you are all experts in this field. Therefore, I would say it's more conversations, share experience, and think about uh, what are the best ways in order to support uh, your business. And what I'm always saying, we learn from each other. This is first what I want to say, because I can only bring in the German perspective, uh, I would say, and then it's always the lessons learned from each. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Bertram Lohmüller. Uh, from my main profession, I'm construction engineer. I did a PhD in innovation and technology management at Grandfield University. And I'm also at Steinbeis University. I'm professor for technology management and also leadership, especially. Uh, with uh, the location, and I will also switch to a small presentation I have prepared. Uh, then we can go through these, uh, these slides. Um, the point is uh, what I have also, and this is my key issue, I did my PhD in innovation management and also in technology transfer, and also coming from the global market development. Uh, there we are in line with the uh, Export Academy in Baden-Württemberg, which is dealing with this topic, how technologies, products could be positioned from Germany, but not only from Germany, from the southern part of Germany, Baden-Württemberg uh, to, other, to other regions. Why this is important, okay, this is the agenda, I switch further, why this is important, this is a map from uh, our region and it's a map from Europe. What is the highest innovative region in Europe? And you see the dark blue ones and in number place number one, where is this yellow, uh, yellow button? Uh, this is uh, Baden-Württemberg, which is uh, the Southern country of Germany. Neighbor is Bavaria. And uh, Tübingen is about 40 kilometers from Stuttgart. Stuttgart, maybe also you know, is the headquarter from Bosch, headquarter from uh, Mercedes, uh, from Porsche, uh, Trumpf, uh, and also we have here a lot of famous um, biotechnology companies and medical companies. Uh, Curevac is actually also developing a new, a new vaccine. And uh, this is the point where we also are technology driven. And also the point is how technologies could be positioned not only in Europe, but also how can they be positioned worldwide. 
And Baden-Württemberg has the highest uh, export rate in Europe uh, uh, comparing to, to other countries. Therefore, we are highly dependent on this international, international market. Uh, what we also are doing, this is a small uh, uh, switch to another project. We are running a benchmarking project actually for green management and leadership, where we're also doing a ranking of um, German companies, how good they are in their sustainability and also in their activities. And we have this also in line with a big German bank, DZ Bank, which is not only in Germany, this is also a bank dealing um, internationally, especially. And also from this, we are learning what the companies are doing and what are the challenges uh, not only in technology transfer, I would say green technology transfer, sustainable technology transfer. How we are supporting this um, together with VNet uh, and Steinbase India, we have also developed uh, a center of excellence for green technology transfer, I would say. Uh, this is what we are doing also in other countries. Uh, and this is what we also see as a good uh, I would say basis, not only focus on a specific country, but also to develop an international network for knowledge exchange and also for technology transfer. And uh, the topics are different. It could be medical issues, could be also, I would say mechanical engineering, which uh, our region is uh, very strong, but also in these environmental areas we are doing doing a lot. And the point is uh, supporting cooperations between industry and research institutes and also looking for ways how technologies could be positioned uh, worldwide, maybe in Africa, also in India, and maybe in Europe, especially. But so how we are doing it, and I'm showing this is, this is not marketing, uh, because uh, when you're looking on this uh, uh, training green technology transfer, Actually, I'm preparing a one week course for Chinese uh, universities and uh, Chinese accelerators in technology transfer. How in China, developed technologies in China could be transferred and market worldwide in a better way. And uh, this is in line with the Steinbeis philosophy, uh, which is also an important one. Uh, when we are doing consultancy, but also uh, trainings and coaching. Uh, in the middle, there is always uh, the project. Uh, also in these certified trainings, each of the participants have a project. And as I've heard from you, someone is coming from a research institute in construction, uh, the other in chemical products, uh, the other in medical products. Uh, then we are defining a short uh, roadmap what should be the result uh, and what should be the, 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 the real strategy which will be developed. And then during the training, we are bringing some theory and then also do coaching. That means the transfer is a very important point. How to bring the theory into practice and how to link it with the market activities. And this is, uh, I would say a link to all the activities Steinbeis has. Uh, Steinbeis has also a university as mentioned, uh, the biggest private university in Germany. And why it's the biggest one? Because uh, the educational program is not theoretical. Uh, the students working 100% in a company, they getting 20% some theoretical sessions and 80% is transfer how the knowledge and also the information could be transferred into practice. Good, uh, just uh, coming to the, to the challenges. Uh, what are the challenges, uh, especially in innovation and innovation transfer? And I would say this is what you know much better than me. Uh, I would say nowadays there are a lot of uh, external challenges. Uh, demography, uh, digitization, uh, protectionism versus internationalization, how to find the best way to position something. Uh, all technologies are, I would say, important to link it with uh, CO2 reduction or green technologies. Uh, I would say this is one point. 
And on the other point, you have to deal with the internal challenges in your institutes, but also the challenges in the companies you are doing business with. That means what is the culture in the company, how the flexible these companies are, what is the qualification, and how is uh, diversity, uh, diversity. And this is, I would say, challenges facing everybody in the market. But this is what you have to understand when you are doing technology transfer. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the point is, what are influences on the design? And as you are also coming from research, I would say a lot of um, technology and uh, basics are included, uh, but you see it also market costs. Some of you also mentioned the costs, regulations, how the products could be positioned in the market. Uh, security environment is becoming more important. And on the other hand, I would say also where they can be produced. Is it uh, a niche product? And uh, this is also what you have to think about when you are thinking to bring a, a product into an international market, uh, especially. Good. Uh, what are, and this is uh, some more basics, some more slides about what are the challenges in order to bring then technologies on the, on the market. The point is what I see, therefore I'm always showing these, uh, this slide. Uh, we are now today, we are thinking today, uh, the position of the product uh, is in the future. At the end, we have to match all these difficulties and also to make a protection of uh, the market and also what are the future market demands. Uh, therefore, I'm always saying uh, parallel to the product uh, development and also to the readiness levels, always the market perspective has to be included. If this is coming too late, then it's always difficult to bring something successful into the market. And what I also saying is when we're talking about technology, uh, we also have to think about what is the manufacturing process and maybe also uh, the process uh, maybe to, uh, to bring, bring it to the end consumer, what are kind of services we can add and what kind of business processes, uh, new business models are possible to position uh, the products and technologies in the market. You see, you have to play the whole piano of uh, innovation, not only technology, but also the, the other things, um, especially. Uh, for this, we have uh, developed a, a tube. Uh, and this is classically what you also know better than me. You are starting with the ideas, you're doing the selection, and then you are doing the development. And bringing it to the market, as mentioned here, this is, I would say, always uh, a main challenge. I would say not only in India, this is always, uh, also a challenge in, in Germany, because Germans are also well known for engineering. And sometimes they have difficulties to bring them products into the market. Uh, therefore, I would say, the other areas are important that you need an innovation strategy, marketing strategy, and you need a clear communication uh, and organization behind, which is not only dealing with the technology itself, which is dealing also with the market uh, itself. And this is linked to another topic when you are looking on, on innovation and what is going wrong in innovation. Uh, I would say um, the point innovation development process is very good in your activity. Uh, also, I would say innovation as a interdisciplinary ta task. I know Indian companies and research institutes also very good uh, positioned. Sometimes uh, I would say uh, the ideas, also ideas to bring it on the market are too low explorated. This is where we are supporting companies to do there. Uh, also to think about what are the mistakes in technology transfer. This is also where many companies uh, had a, a trade off. And I would say this is an ongoing process uh, to bring it on the market. Um, short term, I would say technology transfer is always long term. And uh, this is especially when you're talking with investors, which they want a very short and fast uh, return of invest. 
this is to convince and therefore you have to identify the right partners. Uh, and also this uh, point six uh, is I think a main point, uh, innovations are not accepted by the market because there is no market understanding. And uh, as I've also understood, most of you are working in a specific uh, area, technology area, technology uh, knowledge is given. The point is how to link it with uh, the market uh, activities. And this is, uh, I would say, related to this uh, slide where I'm saying uh, normally for technology transfer, you need four key promoters. Okay, the first one is the person who has the power, who has the lead. That means CEO or uh, department leader. Uh, he's giving the strategy. Then you need technology promoters. This is what I see. Many of you are technology promoters. That means good understanding what kind of technology is there and what uh, to develop. Specialists for developing future products. But what is also very important, and this is what we are saying, and this is also the Steinbeis philosophy, link it directly to the market promoter. You need somebody who is knowing the market, who is knowing uh, the customers, uh, and also to link it closely together and to position the products, uh, not only from the technology side, also to use this information from the market um, in order to adapt the product or the technology to the specific, uh, specific market demands. And uh, of course, you need somebody who is managing this. This is then uh, focusing on this topic, innovation process uh, promoter. This is also not very, very, very new for you. This is what you, what you know, everybody. Uh, that means uh, for developing the idea, developing the, the technology, uh, maybe 18 months is too short if you are in a specific area, uh, then you are developing the first prototype and then you are going on the market. And I would say this market development and also including the market into this technology transfer process must be also very early and must be parallel to the prototype. Otherwise, I would say it's impossible to start and to go into the, into the market uh, with the product or with the, with the service, um, especially. Good, what we are doing is uh, we are supporting uh, with uh, VNet in Steinbase India to think about also what are the market opportunities and also with our international network to identify and also supporting companies what are potential partners and what are good ways to bring um, technology in the market. And I don't want to go into the depth into the steps. I only want to focus on the headline on the box on the right. Uh, the point is building a network of scouts. I would say this is the network you need, scouts in technology, scouts, you need scouts, people who are understanding the market, the market needs, uh, scouts, what kind of technologies are really demanded and to bring it to the market. And this is, I would say networking. This is networking, bringing the right people uh, together in order to make a business and a technology uh, successful, especially. Good, uh, maybe just um, some points. Uh, we are supporting a lot of uh, foreign managers to doing business and to do technology transfer. For this, we have also uh, written a book. It's free, you can download it and you find there some more information, background information, what we, what we need. And also we are active in different countries. I would say this is also the advantage of the Steinbeis network, Germany, India, but also Africa, South America are target markets where we have our partners and we, where we are uh, supporting research institutes, but also companies uh, to increase uh, their business uh, furthermore. 
And finally, this is also my philosophy. Uh, you see here the uh, postcard picture from Tübingen, very old history. It was not destroyed in the Second World War. World War. But what I'm always saying, uh, also maybe in the conference today, one idea, and this is enough to keep your competitors away, uh, it must be the right idea. You have to meet the right persons. Therefore, this conference is a very good opportunity. And on the other hand, uh, the time must be ready. The time for the technology and to position the technology is a key, key issue, uh, especially. And uh, this, I would say, is one of the keys, uh, what also Steinbeis is offering to build up this network of scouts and also to support with a clear market demand organizations uh, to transfer the technology into different markets, not only India, Europe, but also worldwide, um, especially. So I would say this is only a small input. And I know you are also more experienced than me here. Uh, what I could say where this is from the German perspective, where German companies are struggling with uh, is actually also uh, to deal with these international demands to position the products with the right uh, design uh, internationally, also with costs, therefore automatization is one key. And uh, what we are supporting the companies always to link research to a real market entrance project. And this is what Steinbeis can do, to link up the different institutes, to link up uh, people uh, to have perspective on technology and market, and then to have a clear coaching approach uh, to support technology transfer, not only in Europe, but also worldwide. So please, uh, Inet, maybe you can add some, some points to the Steinbeis philosophy, but I would say this is the key, project-oriented, directly result-oriented, and uh, bringing in the market perspective in every activity. You have, you are unmuted, Edith. Thank you, Bertram. So shall we have uh, the floor open for uh, question and answers for the next 15 minutes? Yes, of course. If you okay. are next presentation from yes. Mr. Steck. Uh, Vineet, uh, can I ask a small question? Yeah, uh, Mr. Gupta, please introduce yourself and then uh, yeah. Yeah. please ask a question. Just one minute. Am I audible? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, presently, I am a research scholar at the Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research mm -hmm. at the uh, Central Road Research Institute of CSIR. And uh, um, before this, I was uh, with the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research. I retired from there. And uh, what I have, uh, what the question which I have in mind is, uh, that in the in the various CSI laboratories, uh, uh, they are trying to commercialize uh, various technologies which they are uh, producing. Uh, but what I feel is uh, the the uh, commercialization uh, of technologies on which they work that depends on certain uh, uh, the the focus areas of a certain institute or the or the or the domain areas of a certain institute. But besides the technologies which they are trying to commercialize, there's a lot of research which goes on in all the CSIR centers and other, other research institutes in the, in the country, mm -hmm. like the, like the uh, PhD scholars and the, and the PhDs which they pursue. Because I find that in each PhD, there is at least some innovative element. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the, the institute, when they work on commercialization, they pick up only a few of the uh, novel research ideas of those research projects. And the, many of the um, research ideas in those PhD thesis, they get lost. They are not captured by the institutes for further, uh, for further commercialization or so, so, so what I mean, mean to say the pipeline of commercialization 
to 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 keep it going uh, so what i want to ask is in germany do you have certain mechanism uh, maybe some expert uh, institute or some uh, uh, some um, expert uh, uh, some experts who look at the kind of uh, the the phd's or the researches which goes on at various institutes and try to tell the heads of the institutes the areas which they should pursue in future to 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 keep the line of uh, 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 line of innovation uh, ongoing so that is my question i would say there is no no individual institute but the approach of uh, the german government was in the last 15 years to build up so called um, innovation clusters that means uh, to bringing together industry research centers and also uh, universities uh, to organize events and share information to get a better understanding what is in the pipeline as you mentioned and what are the the market uh, possibilities especially and uh, this is a very uh, successful successful way um, especially germany is decentralized uh, the point is uh, education research is mainly independent companies can decide what they want uh, therefore the point is always network building and cluster building uh, where there are different activities and this is what we for example also with these centers we are building up with steinbase and with vnet uh, to build up specific clusters and also not only in in a specific branch i think the the benefits are coming when there are different branches involved and then you have the different perspectives okay thank yeah. you maybe thank this is one strategy yes from the yeah. we have a question from professor rajay agarwal yes please yeah uh, let me introduce myself i am uh, ajay agarwal uh, i am from csir siri so siri is for electronics engineering research institute Uh, we are having existence of more than 70 years now uh, we are in the various aspects of electronics uh, we started with high power high frequency vacuum tubes for different applications then other sector what we are in is uh, sensors semiconductor devices for various applications so we design we do some prototyping and then we make systems around these sensors with uh, readouts ai and communication aspect so that that is what we are doing uh, since you know that uh, semiconductor ecosystem is not very well developed in india at this moment how do you see uh, your partnership or you can help uh, institute like us to take our um, technologies or knowledge base or we can collaborate with other institutions mm -hmm. for the benefit of uh, all yeah, yeah. Uh, one one possibility is um, especially for the german government so this is also a point how to commercialize uh, innovations and technologies they have a lot of funding projects and uh, what we also are doing maybe can you speak is, little loud yes yes okay uh, maybe the microphone have, Now you hear me okay better. Uh, now uh, the point is uh, there are also uh, the possibility to get funding to support cooperations between India and Germany and the key topic is B2B uh, and also uh, 2 plus 2 uh, that means there is always a company from Germany and uh, and the research institute plus company in India uh, and the research institute from India and this is one possibility to have this perspective um, uh, included and to develop uh, something furthermore uh, the other thing is um, what we also saying um, when there is a technology and this is also what uh, research institutes and also big companies in germany are doing uh, they are using this project competence study model from germany uh, that means for example Mercedes has something to develop and say okay uh, it's not uh, we have to do it in line with support of Steinbeis then they are uh, hiring a master student uh, to say okay do the master thesis over the next two years 
but the master thesis is linked to evaluate the market, how to bring a product service into the market. And then in line with this project, uh, it's uh, this transfer is then, then matched. Uh, that means within Steinbeck is always this technology transfer and practice is included. That means all students at Steinbeck are not, I know the, the study pro, uh, model in, in India very well, it's not theory, it's 100% project oriented. And therefore I'm always saying we don't have a campus. Our students working 80% in the company. We do uh, over the weekend our seminars. And this is this uh, real approach to support this uh, transfer. Uh, at the end, you need some people who are coaching and also to bringing different uh, perspectives together. This maybe are some some possibilities uh, I can suggest. Ma'am, I would just uh, like to add here one of the very good approaches uh, with uh, which J uh, Japanese people follow with Steinbase is to make friendship with uh, two or three Steinbase centers and uh, work together with them and then uh, take up their technologies and try to access the German and the European market through these yeah. Steinbase centers. Mm -hmm. Because both of the Steinbase centers are very close to many industries in their own domain area. Yeah. So Japanese invariably will have two or three delegations to Steinbase centers in Germany every year. Even Chinese are doing that now. And they make good relations with Steinbase centers and then they do some amount of co-development if required and then access the European market through Germany. Mm -hmm. That may be another approach to uh, closely work with one or two Steinbase centers in your own area. Yeah. So Steinbase centers are there in India also? In India, we don't have uh, many active centers here because, you know, uh, Steinbase is all about technology commercialization, working for the industry. And mm -hmm. our institutions, particularly in the private sector, they are not very much tuned to work uh, in the industrial area. So we have, don't have many success models. So, but we can uh, help you in, collaborate with the, in collaboration with the German model, uh, centers. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, we have somebody in chat. Yes, Mr. Bhut, can I ask? Yeah, Dr. Karade. Ah, yes, thank you. Uh, I am Asar Karade from Central Building Research Institute, Roorkee, where I am heading a, a group on advanced structural composites and durability. Uh, I have uh, two queries. First thing, is there any formal collaboration between CSI and Eastern Base India? The other thing is uh, how Eastern Base India can help us in marketing our the already developed technologies. And uh, whether you look for market in India only or international market also. If you can respond. There is a, a formal agreement which was signed between Stein Base India and uh, CSIR okay. in the month of uh, July 2019. Uh, this agreement is valid for us. And uh, the whole idea of this agreement is uh, uh, we have to support uh, CSIR in commercialization of technologies in India and abroad also. Mm. Um, okay. So we, what we, are, we are already working with some of the labs to identify uh, the technologies. And uh, the way we work is uh, we, like uh, Mr. Loy Muller told, we have our own uh, consultants who will work closely with your scientists in uh, identifying the best possible technologies and then uh, trying to uh, create techno-economic feasibility reports for the industry. And then we get into the market. So uh, we, have we have established a couple of models for that and we are already working with a few institutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you, thank you. Sir. We have a question from uh, Mr. Naresh Kumar, CSIR Nistats. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, please uh, ask your query. Uh, basically, my name is Naresh Kumar, uh, representing uh, National Institute of Science, Technology, and Development Studies. Uh, basically, as the name indicates, that we are a policy advocacy institute, and we are working in the area of uh, this. Um, uh, STIP studies uh, um, uh, with respect to different aspects of SNT uh, uh, policy advocacy uh, in the area of SNT management. Um, uh, then this, uh, 
सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट ट्रेडिशनल नॉलेज इंक्लूसिव हेल्थ इंटरफेसिंग साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सोशियो इकोनॉमिक इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट एंड फिजिबिलिटी रिपोर्ट एंड वी हैव जस्ट कम्प्लीट ए प्रोजेक्ट ऑफ सी एस आई आर टेक्नोलॉजी असेसमेंट टी आर एल लेवल असेसमेंट तो वी आर वर्किंग इन दरिया इन दिस एरिया तो फ्रॉम दिस मीटिंग वी एक्सपेक्ट द कोलाबोरेशन और अपॉर्चुनिटीज टू कोलाबोरेट विद द डिफरेंट एजेंसीज इन द एरिया ऑफ सोशियो इकोनॉमिक इम्पैक्ट असेसमेंट बेंच मार्किंग टी आर एल असेसमेंट एक्सेट्रा तो दिस इज द ब्रीफ अबाउट द इंस्टीट्यूट आवर इंस्टीट्यूट and if uh, somebody has some uh, query to uh, we will be glad to respond thank you so much thank you mr naresh kumar so we will be more than happy to uh, work with you in case there are any such requirements for technology assessment or uh, social impact assessment and so on yeah please uh, uh, can you repeat we'll be happy to work uh, uh, together with your institute in case there are any requirements of social impact assessment or uh, a uh, technology assessment and so on so we can yes make yeah, yes human models for that yes yeah, very very uh, good we also uh, conduct some studies with the iip dehradun etc collaborative project and bpcl also and um, i think um, mp we have done a work uh, long back uh, uh, assessment type of technology uh, for mp also so we are working in indesia and we will be very happy and to collaborate with you thank you mr nirish yeah Uh, any other questions from anybody else maybe one final sentence to to summarize um, the approach of steinbase and uh, there are i would say two big institutes from germany which are famous for technology transfer it's fraunhofer and it's steinbase steinbase has much more practical approach and the approach is really not to work as an external and say everything to know better the point is how to develop the competences in your institutes and in the companies and support more in the way of coaching that means uh, at the end we are saying um, with uh, this uh, with this uh, education and also support Uh, the company and also the institute must be able to run the activities by themselves of course by using the network together that means the steinbase network plus uh, the network uh, from your institutes i think this is then the basis for for success again networking scouting uh, find the right partners uh, there is what we can support and deal with okay but um, uh, i have a question from you Yes. So uh, you mentioned that uh, you showed a very nice uh, piano of innovation. Yes. You, it is quite important that uh, while uh, people work on technology, they also should work on the manufacturing process and the business process and the marketing process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In a typical R and D environment, uh, let us say we talk about a Fraunhofer lab or a Max Planck Institute or anybody, how do you make it uh, possible in an R and D lab? to have uh, this total piano operation what is the mechanism in germany good mechanism in germany is that is what uh, what uh, i would say this is this interdisciplinarity that you also uh, looking in research institutes uh, not only have the experts for the for the technology itself but also to integrate uh, experts from uh, from other perspectives and if you're also dealing with for example fraunhofer they have a lot of different uh, different uh, i would say uh, perspectives and also different different institutes as steinbase also we have more than 1000 institutes two different areas and then the advantage is you can link the different perspectives together and then you can also share information and then you can play the innovation piano <laughs> and so you uh, you like say it. that one research lab will link with other research lab yes 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 the expert the research lab who is specialist in manufacturing process yes maybe then you, they are working with a research lab in artificial intelligence because okay. this is also directly linked that means iot internet of things artificial intelligence is part of uh, of production nowadays that means you need these different perspectives uh, and to work together that means technology is becoming more complex and therefore these clusters are important uh, to have different disciplines uh, to share information between different disciplines that means the interdisciplinary approach 
I would say this is the future all over the world, not only in Germany. What about marketing? Do you have your own marketing people in a research lab? Or yes, how? of course, they have their own marketing people. Of course, if you're looking at, uh, at Steinbeis and also looking at Fraunhofer, they have their marketing uh, guys uh, included. Uh, that means um, research is not only on the technology side, always the market uh, is uh, in line. And for example, if uh, the German Ministry of Research and Education is funding research projects, you always have to show what is the business plan in many projects, research projects, you have to name a marketing expert, you have to plan a budget for this guy, because this commercialization is an important key. And it's the same for uh, European funded projects, always market perspective must be included. Okay, great. Thank you. So, Thank you. do we have any other question? Good. And maybe we can switch to Mr. Steckor. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. If you have no other questions, we can. Uh, uh, one uh, one thing is uh, because the whole idea of this roundtable was not to have a monologue. And the idea was to discuss amongst each other and try to find out solutions to some of the problems which uh, as research uh, uh, transfer uh, uh, offices we are ha having in most of the labs and universities. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would rather request everybody to, if they are hesitant to come out in this platform, they can even write an email to me or directly to Bertram Loymuller also. And we can come back to you with more details of uh, what we suggest uh, from our end. So we, we are okay with that uh, because the whole idea is to create more and more dialogue and try to find out solutions at, at our lower end. Because at the government and policy level, there are a lot of talks which happen. I'm in this field of technology transfer for the last 20 years and uh, I'm hearing the same uh, output of the seminar, same talks in uh, national level and state level seminars, which I was hearing 20 years back. Things do not change at the central level. So we believe we will have to change at our level and try to do whatever best we can do. That's my own personal opinion, not to demean anybody or any other person. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, Bertrand, we can move to the next uh, presentation. With the yes, maybe we can go to, to Mr. Steck from... Uh, from you the, can introduce Mr. Steck. Yeah, maybe you can say myself. I only want to mention that we are working now for one or one and a half year together. The point is how to position this technology in international markets. And then it's clear networking is the key. And also um, uh, the point is to find the experts. And therefore we invited Mr. Stack to talk a little bit about uh, this specific product. But I will hand it over to you, Mr. Stack. Maybe you can introduce yourself and start the presentation. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Friedrich Steck. I am the te technical director from the company German Green Tech Ecologic. Our company is located in Karlsruhe. It's in Baden-Württemberg also. And our factory is in Mannheim. I want to give you a short uh, demonstration uh, for, from our liquid, what we produce. Uh, we use it in the, um, in the uh, things of, to build roads and all kinds of stabilizing grounds and we call it undervolt and for this i have make a small presentation i give it to you now i hope it's working do you see uh, okay let's start our company is German Green Tech, ecological, and we have a special liquid, we call it Underbolt, and our technology is the Underbolt system. This is for ground stabilization, a very intelligent way. Our material look like this, is a liquid, is a concentrate of waxes and oleins. It's purely uh, biological. 100%. This is a concentrate. We use it together with water. 
one, one piece of uh, concentrate and 50 pieces of water. And it's also possible you can drink it. It's, it's no chemical. <laughs> and um, it's 100% biological, eco-friendly, of course. And the main effects, uh, if you treat the soil, it comes to hydrophobic. And they have a compressive strength is very, very, moment. So, uh, it's very high. And we use also cement, three to 5%. And this mixture basically lends the treated soil against heavy aggressive influences. So this becomes water tightness and no damages. The damages will be reduced because we have no copulas in our um, treated soil and you, you become no cracks. This is very important for the base for our roads. And the lifespan or the lifetime is much more extend as, as the conventionally uh, method. Um, cost saving is very important in the whole world. So we need no crushed stones to build a road, no gravel or bituminous materials. So this is very costing saving. And also we need no because of this, that we don't need these materials, we need no logistics for these materials. And this reduces the time for the project very much. And also the surface is much stronger than the conventional road. And with this all components together, we can reduce the costs by 30% of the uh, to the conventional method. These are now the steps how we used our material. First, we have, sorry. <laughs> First, we have to prepare the surface with a grader. And these are all the machines what we need in, in, by the side. We have uh, rollers, two rollers, uh, water tanker, uh, recycler, milling recycler, and a cement spreader, this and, and the grader. And these are all the machines what we need by the side. The first step is here is now our liquid inside. This is water with underbolt in this tank and through the pipe goes in the machine and milling to the existing ground. Here comes our material in the machine and mix it together with the ground. This is a, you see here is the Liquid in the tank goes to this pipe in the machine inside and inside machine. We mix it together with the soil and cover it together with the soil and with the earth grains. And we go on a depth of 40 centimeters in the most time. And this is enough for trucks with load for 60 tons, 40 tons, 50 tons. Uh, 15, uh, 15, sorry, and for heavy load trucks. And you see here the grain which is covered with our liquid in the soil. And this is the machine, how it looks, maybe by Wittgen or other uh, factories have always the same, but this is the, the big one, Wittgen, and this is inside to recycle the soil. It's looked inside. After this recycling, the second step is we spread the cement on top. Here is our treated soil, water and underbolt. And here is the dry cement. And we mix it now together with the milling machine. And uh, very fast. Moment. So, and the next step, we have to compress the soil and we use heavy uh, rollers, 
between uh, more than 15 tons and pressure now the soil and it begins to have to phobic. The water come out and dry very fast, much faster than uh, if you use only pure cement. It's a very quick system. After two days, you can bring uh, asphalt on the top, on the base. And this is an uh, example in, in Stuttgart by Mercedes-Benz. This was the green, and then the greater make it cl uh, glad. And then this look after treated our soil and after uh, asphalting. If you have bad roads, poor roads with broken asphalt, we can use our system also. Uh, this is the existing asphalt and we mill through the asphalt together with our material on the board. And it's very fast system. This is uh, 12 hour later, you see only underbolt and cement without anything look like this. And you can use also on clay, climb. It's very, it's work with all uh, cases of soil on the whole world. And it becomes uh, waterproof. You see it on these pictures. It's raining. This is our uh, base without asphalt. One day before we finished our base and it, over the night the rain comes and you see the rain, the water go not in the base. It's like we asphalt. Also very special, we can stabilize desert sand. Uh, desert sand is very, very uh, heavy to stabilize. And we make a project in Oman and this worked perfect. We have uh, measuring the pressure uh, after uh, three days, we have uh, more than 220 megapascal. Also, we have made uh, some roads over the world in Brasilia, Russia, in all kinds, uh, in all countries. So, Underbolt works plus 50, plus 15 degrees and minus 50 degrees between in all kinds of um, weather we can use. And this is now different in, in, in the conventional way. You have made some layers with special granulate, uh, gravel, and all these on bituminous base curves. Um, we don't need this. We need only the soil. We mix the soil with underbolt together with cement, three to five percent, and then we bring the the primer and split to bind it on the asphalt to the base. This is our system is very quick, and you can load uh, here uh, trucks. You can have trucks on this road with uh, fifty tons and more. Time saving is in a normal way. You make one kilometer road, you need again uh, to 10 days and we can finish this in two days. So it's four to five times faster than the conventional uh, way. Also by the conventional road construction, you need a lot of uh, logistic, a lot of transports, a lot of materials and a lot of manpower. And you have to do a, a, a big layers you have to change. And we use the existing uh, ground and we need only small equipment and we need small manpower and we are much, much faster and cheaper. And we have a lot of uh, testing results and uh, ex expertise uh, around the world. Uh, from TÜV, we have uh, some expertise. TÜV is also in uh, on the whole world. And we have a, a very, very good results on all the tests. We make hundreds of tests around the world. Okay, this should be for the first. I hope you have impression how it works, our system. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, okay, thank you. Thank you very much for this. Mr. Uh, Streck, uh, uh, the, the purpose of this presentation was actually, uh, so Steinbase uh, would be bringing industry partners for this project in India. And we are looking for uh, any of the labs who would be interested to partner for a pilot demonstration project. So after that, uh, the industry could absorb this technology. Mm -hmm. If any of the labs they have any questions or they have any suggestions, we'll be, uh, yeah. we'll be happy to discuss. Biniji, I have a question, if I am permitted to. Yeah, Dr. Hota. Yeah. This is uh, Dr. Manoranjan Hota. I used to work in the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and um, handling the waste management and the chemicals waste management. I have a small question to the presenter. Now that he has uh, mentioned that the industrial waste can be used for uh, road construction, is there is this in, uh, industry or the consulting firm also engaged in um, utilizing the waste, particularly the uh, the municipal waste or the plastic waste in road construction in such a manner, so that we can always have an exchange of. Uh, technical exchange and uh, uh, implementation those in our country. Nochmal, du könntest mir mal kurz das übersetzen. Ich habe das nicht ganz verstanden. Ihr Mikro ist aus. Okay. Just switch it into German, sorry. Uh, Hier <laughs> soll um den das Thema municipal waste uh, kann das Beispiel mit 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 waste auch gemacht werden. Im Endeffekt ist es auch der Untergrund hat mit waste nichts zu tun so so. Nee. Und der, nee. der Boden genannt. Genau, das war Wir das können Ziel. Recyclingmaterial mitverwenden, ja, das geht, aber Waste in dem Fall nicht. Okay, the point was, uh, it's not for, for waste. That means uh, what can be used is recycling material, uh, concrete, maybe recycled concrete, maybe other recycled materials, but not for municipal waste. Uh, that means what, what is clear, you can use the existing uh, ground. Uh, maybe with some uh, some recycled construction materials, but not more. This is what what I have understood and what the product is uh, is doing. Yeah. But to uh, if I may have a subsequent uh, question, is there anything uh, any uh, where uh, we can get through the standby India uh, such technology from other German exports or German companies? Yes. Yes, we would have to good. look if uh, any other uh, strain-based centers or any research labs are working on uh, waste uh, material for road construction like plastic waste and other waste. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this is one possibility to expand it to other materials. This is maybe this could be tested. Maybe this is an idea. Uh, maybe it could be used. Uh, on the terms of environmental technologies, uh, there I want to uh, recommend also to, to lean it. Actually, we are establishing and has established a center of green technologies uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, and there the topics is uh, how to deal with plastics, uh, plastics recycling, how to deal with uh, uh, bio waste, uh, waste to energy. And also therefore this green technology underbolt, I would say it's also green technology, is also one part into these, uh, into these areas. And what I want to mention, therefore, I like it also, the presentation. The point is when you are doing technology transfer, uh, the point is you have to visualize it in a good way. Therefore, it's a good example how uh, the product is visualized, how the process steps are visualized. And this is what we have experienced with a lot of international companies here in Tübingen we host Normally, when there is no pandemic, more than 200 managers support them international business. And one key is always how to show uh, the technology and how to make it uh, and visualize it. This is also a key you have to do and there you have to, to work on. And sometimes it seems very easy. I would say if you see the film and the presentation, you say, no problem, we can do it. But the point is, if you deal with your own, <laughs> technology, then I would say, then you will see where are the, uh, the difficulties for visualization. Yeah. Of course, we can link environmental uh, institutes also to the Indian market, of course, maybe to the 
Dr. Hota, uh, I would uh, request if you could uh, send me an email so we can look, uh, look at what are the German institutes, including Steinbase centers who are working in relevant technologies, and then we can try to create a link with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, Vinay, this is Shantanu. Yeah, Dr. Shantanu, tell me. Yes, uh, I just uh, need to add a few more points to Dr. Yeah, please uh, introduce Dr. yourself uh, for the benefit of everybody else. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Shantanu Talukdar. I am an innovation consultant working in the technology transfers. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Primarily, my focus of work is in uh, biotechnologies, where I'm working mm -hmm. on the uh, circular economy on two aspects with German technologies based in Germany. We are scaling okay. up technology at TRO6 and above mm -hmm. from two uh, research institutes. One objective is to eliminate ethylene cracker. So we are developing biomonomers from fungi. Mm -hmm. And biomonomer is the precursor for polymers. Mm -hmm. So we are tackling plastics from two ends. One is developing plastics through biomonomers and biopolymers. And the other aspect is specific to Dr. Hota's question, whether there are technologies to tackle plastic waste. The answer is yes. yes. There are specific enzymes which has already been developed at EU levels. Mm -hmm. And these actually depolymerize these plastics to and give it back to their virgin state. So that means if you have polymers and plastics don't decompose, you can extract valuable polymers out of these plastics. They don't remain plastics anymore. So either you can get valuable polymers extracted out of those plastics, or there are specific enzymes which can be tailor-made to decompose these plastics 100%. So both of these technologies are available at commercial scales in German tech, with German technology. This I can add. Very yeah, good, good. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, I know one, one of these institutes and um, we speak about um, also together with the Steinbeck India, we have developed a new term in this issue. We're speaking about integrated waste management. That means looking for all ways uh, how to process, how to deal, and how to make further components for uh, reuse, recycling, upcycling. All these things are hard. And uh, Velka, maybe we can, can think about how to link uh, these activities together with our activities uh, at uh, this time base, India, especially. Yeah, yeah sure, okay. sure. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah, Mr. Huta, I would be very happy to connect you with the, uh, Mr. Tarukda. So once you give the requirement, maybe uh, both of you could, uh, uh, we can support you in uh, this. Uh, we, we can see what is the best model for uh, meeting your requirements. Mm -hmm. So we also had uh, somebody from Sierra. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ms. Ambika Behel. Uh, she's still there. Yeah, she is, like to... No, she is not there. I am Satish Pandey, Principal Scientist, Central Road Research Institute. I have a few questions regard from Mr. Frederick and uh, Mr. Vineet. We are working extensively on different pavement stabilization technology mm -hmm. and successfully yeah, carried so I'd like to up. hear your opinion about uh, this technology which has been presented by Frederick uh, Strick. Yeah, it's an interesting technology and I would like to congratulate Mr. Frederick to come forward with this innovative technology. But uh, as far as the technical content is concerned, uh, we require certain clarification, like is, is he has carried out any sort of durability test on the stabilized soil mass, since that types of results is not visible in his presentation. Uh, there is one Indian Road Congress specification through which we determine the uh, efficacy of any stabilizer for Indian payment system. So the product is required to be uh, uh, re-evaluated or retested in order to ensure its compliance according to the given guidelines. And subsequently, the field trial can be carried out. Uh, 
the second important aspect is that like in his slide he has shows shows that like this material can be utilized for the stabilization of reclaimed asphalt pavement material so in case like if the material uh, is coming from bituminous layer then it will be remain coated partially with bitumen or asphaltic binder then in such circumstances how this particular system react with the aggregate mass and can bind it Okay. Yeah, these are all very specific questions. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's nice. The point is, uh, from, from my perspective, I don't know if maybe Mr. Steck can also then then answer it. Uh, of course, if you bring then this product to the Indian market, maybe some tests are necessary. Maybe then there is also maybe the certificates uh, are necessary. What what I uh, know is. It's no problem that there is uh, uh, with asphalt and other or bitumen, it's uh, compatible. This is not, not the problem. But the point is your question is going then more on a deeper, uh, deeper evaluation. What are uh, the, I would say, where it can use, under what conditions it could be used. Maybe this can be then arranged individually then later between Mr. Steck and maybe also Mr. Hofmeister was also from the same company. Maybe, maybe Mr. Steck, you have one comment. Yeah, my, my, my idea is uh, if they have uh, special questions for our technology, they have they should send an email by you. And we explain in the answer back what uh, we can, um, uh, our answers back. This is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, the best yeah. way. Uh, this is the Mr. Best Pandey, way. Uh, I would request you to send a mail to me so that okay. I can. Okay. So, but my question again to you would be: Would you be interested to have a partnership with them, provided we bring an industry to have a pilot project? Of course, provided that they satisfy all your queries. Uh, yeah, so definitely, are you definitely. Interested yeah. For this kind of a partnership for a technology transfer to Indian companies. Yes, it's a very good technology from uh, uh, Indian road points of view. But but it requires like since the uh, Indian topographical condition is quite different from the condition where it has been tested, particularly in Europe and Russia, the quantum of traffic on those roads is not significant as we witnessed in Indian scenario. Here the design traffic goes up to 100 to 150 MSA million standard axle repetition. Besides that, the axle loading condition is very different from European and Russian countries. So once if it is proven, then it is a very promising technology for the Indian roads too, and uh, very good market uh, they can find in Indian uh, road system. I would also like uh, to add, uh, Mr. Pandey, one more uh, very critical thing about Indian roads is the road cutting. So suddenly one night, overnight you will find the road cut by somebody without informing the authorities. <laughs> yes. How does this kind of a material behave? Yes. Uh, or how can you actually uh, 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 repair it. That is a very good question for Indian environment. Okay. Can I tell something? Yes. Yeah, Hello. Yeah. yeah, I'm Dr. Prasad from CRRI. I am working in okay. Geotech Engineering Division. We have worked with a similar pro product like Stable Road from Germany. It is a stabilizer. The principle, everything is same. But if they want to use the same product in India, we have to do initial laboratory evaluation as per Indian requirement. Yeah. And it should be approved from the Indian Road Congress. Mm -hmm. Okay, for that actually, whatever the material from there, they have to test it in India, in any approved laboratory or any approved institution. We have done similar product like Stable Road from Germany only. They have also mixed the same with the cement. So if they want to use the product in India, they have to tie up with some institu institution or CRRI. And they have to do the basic laboratory evaluation, and then we will see whether it satisfies as per Indian requirements. Then only they can go to the field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is what I want to say. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, I think, uh, Mr. Frederick, uh, you need to note these points once we are planning to come to India directly or indirectly. Uh, we have another question from Dr. Minakshi Singh. No further questions. Yeah. Dr. Minakti. So, no further questions or? Um, okay, Dr. Minakshi has a question. Uh, Minakshi, oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. She, she is the head of the uh, business development in the CSIR headquarters. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Yeah. So, she, 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 she with her only, we have signed the agreement with CSIR. You met her in Delhi. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> 
<laughs> when I see the picture, then I maybe remember. Yeah. <laughs> very good evening. I think your voice is very low, ma'am. Yeah, I think my this uh, some issues are there in this computer. And, no, it's okay. Uh, now it's okay. Yeah, we can hear you. Again. Actually, I just want to know, it's a very good, I think, discussion meeting happened today. But I just want to know from German side, what kind of arrangement, you know, we are looking with the Indian uh, laboratories. That is my, you know, just, uh, I need some kind of clarification on these points. Okay, that means uh, the point is how to, what I've understood, to connect uh, the Indian institutions with the German institutions. And uh, also, I would say uh, this is also you need a platform to bring the people together. Uh, and also, what we can really arrange is uh, in the next round tables, maybe to invite other institutes. I think this is one, one possibility. Another possibility is. Um, if we have really the, the requests, what are the research areas, what you are interested in, uh, with our Steinbeis network and also with Wiener together, maybe we can contact also some, uh, it could be private institutes, could be also other research institutes from Steinbeis. As mentioned, Steinbeis is now a big family with more than 1,300 institutes to different areas. Therefore, it's always a pleasure to connect uh, Indian uh, institutes with, with, with German institutes. Um, oh, uh, this is what we can because, already get support. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, because actually we want to take, you know, this kind of partnership further. So like uh, in our agreement, when we signed the distinct deal, we have mentioned that it is a general kind of arrangements. We have made it there. But of course, when we are going for some specific kind of, you know, projects here, like maybe in road, uh, road transportation, or maybe mm -hmm. some very specific. So in that only few labs are working of CSIR. Mm -hmm. So how like uh, maybe uh, CSIR lab can be there, like from India side, still be center can be there, or maybe some industry also can be part of this. Or uh, from German government also similarly like this maybe. So this should become like, you know, something networking kind of thing so that many partners are there and they will be able to provide, you know, play their role in achieving the our objectives of this agreement, whatever yeah. we yeah. have done uh, in past. Yeah, I agree. That means this is, uh, as you mentioned, uh, some activities uh, are necessary. Uh, the German government is funding several activities. What is always the challenge in our activities? It's always a pleasure to arrange such roundtables and also to organize uh, such conferences. But one success of Steinbeis is always uh, there must be a clear business case behind. That means uh, we always have to think about that maybe in the future, maybe there is some public funding. At the end, uh, we have to think about how to finance them, these, uh, these activities. Um, the point is always, if there is then a project connected and it's running, this is, I would say, a really good, good point. Uh, and then the success story is coming automatically. Uh, I will discuss it also with Minet. Maybe this is the first starting point. And the, I like really this idea of the round table uh, because it's uh, focused and in the future, as you mentioned, maybe we can invite more companies uh, uh, to join uh, in these uh, roundtables. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. One more thing is, uh, uh, I see a very big potential even for our technologies because uh, for last almost five years, I'm hearing uh, Steinbase uh, experts telling me that uh, the German technologies are very very complex. They are over engineered technologies, and in most uh, countries uh, like in Latin America or. Uh, South America or uh, Africa, uh, they need uh, bare basic technologies uh, which are low cost but which give the same results. So yes. this is a very, very good uh, area of uh, collaboration and for us uh, probably a, a, a platform like Steinbase uh, could be quite useful because uh, German engineering is uh, more respected globally and the people just close their eyes and 
and they will take a German technology or German engineering uh, product or service. So definitely we can look at uh, utilizing the Steinbase platform by creating more and more partnerships uh, with Steinbase centers, even for promoting or even fine tuning our technologies and be able to access European and other markets as well. That's my personal opinion. Yes. Yeah, thank you. This is a very good, good comment. Uh, if you're looking on the slide back, the piano of innovation, there is also this topic frugal innovation. That means, yes, really adoption of uh, ideas, technologies to the local needs and especially Africa, for example, there must be uh, uh, easy handling and also the costs must be reduced. Yeah. Okay, great. Are there any other questions? Thank you. I think it is very good discussion. Yeah, I think this is a quite good, good discussion and uh, we would like to continue further with this kind of roundtables. Maybe we can have a more focused roundtables uh, next time with the clear focus on which domain we are connecting and we could have a very specific labs and industries connecting from both the sides in these roundtables. So, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the uh, key outcomes of uh, today's meeting, apart from whatever uh, information and knowledge uh, Professor Loyamulan has given, is uh, that we will be looking forward to working with CRRI on this particular technology from Underbolt uh, from Germany. And apart from this, we could also look at uh, uh, establishing a more uh, partnership or the tuning relations between uh, CSIR labs and Steinbase uh, innovations in Germany. Um, uh, I think I, if there are any other su suggestions, uh, it will be welcome or we then close the session. No, I think, uh, thank you very much also to you, Vinod, for organizing this, uh, this uh, round table. I find it really an excellent idea. Uh, by the way, I've also invited, invited an international group. Uh, we are running an international project actually together with uh, Ukraine, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Belarus, uh, Kazakhstan. Some of the participants uh, of this training have also participated today. Therefore, it was, I would say, also an international roundtable, not oh, only nice. in uh, <laughs> India. <laughs> I was actually surprised to see some of the people from East Europe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, I would say it uh, also thanks to, to Mr. Hofmeister and Mr. Stack for the presentation. It's always, you need time, you need to prepare. Uh, international conferences always are challenging. And again, also thank you very much from, from my side. And I'm really looking forward after the pandemic to visit India the next time. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Bertram, and uh, from uh, Spain based uh, family, I especially thank Dr. Minakshi uh, for uh, supporting us uh, to invite all the labs at such a short notice. And uh, thanks to all of the scientists uh, from uh, all the CSIR labs and other guests and the Steinbase consultants also who have uh, given their time to attend this and provide their valuable feedback. I would uh, request uh, all of you to kindly give your inputs and suggestions over email to me so that we yeah. uh, could uh, again uh, organize such roundtables which are much more focused and we could actually target some deliverables out of it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Maybe, all maybe everybody can switch on the thank screen, you. then we can make a screenshot at the end. Oh, nice. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Request everybody to please put on your camera so that we can have uh, screenshots. Yeah. Okay. Good. Look. Okay. Good. <laughs> Look. Okay. So, and then to the next slide. Yes, I have first to, to put it on in a, just a moment. I put it in there. Okay. And now I'm making the other because it's a difference into two screens. Yes. Okay. Good. And then. Going to three screens. Then, yes, yes. There are sub screens. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, maybe my colleague Anna has also made a screenshot. Yeah. Um, okay. Then, thank you very much. Yes. And uh, also, again, for uh, for organizing and also... I think some, some labs have not introduced. I think some scientists, they have 
they didn't get chance to speak they, you know tell even their names yes 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 yeah yeah actually uh, we started at uh, 4 uh, uh, 350 but uh, 442 almost we were going with the introduction so we had to stop it there mm-hmm. good again thank you very much greetings to india enjoy the evening yeah take care of you have a nice thank time you. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you bye 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 thank you all thank you thank you very much